Hello everyone, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe, click on that notification bell, share, like, dislike, comment, let us know what you're thinking. You could also leave a review and follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. Plus, if you want to leave a donation to the Angel of Words Entertainment Podcast, you could do it at Cash App A-O-W-E-N-T. Now, today on the Angel of Words Podcast, we have respiratory therapist Shantae Saru on deck on the Angel of Words Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Angel of Words podcast. I'm your host, Angel of Words, and today we have essential worker, respiratory therapist, Miss Shantae Saru. Miss Saru, thank you for joining us today here on the Angel of Words podcast. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank now, you. Now, Miss Saru, you know, you have been in the trenches during the coronavirus pandemic since its outset. Yes, I have. There's a lot of people out there that don't even believe that what hap- what's happening with the pandemic is true. They feel it's a farce perpetrated by the deep state. I don't want to get into that nonsense, mm-hmm. but you've been in the trenches. You've seen it. So before about before we speak about you being a respiratory therapist, um, I want you to speak up a, a little bit about what you witnessed in the city hospitals before you even went on this journey as a respiratory therapist. Okay, well, soon as COVID began, I was already in the mix like i was already involved in it being being a patient transporter at bellevue hospital yeah so once that started like it was it was hectic it was very scary we didn't even know exactly what was going on and then um just patients in there like alone no family members we hear all the healthcare workers here trying to save these patients lives they're here by themselves they have um there was like the iPads just to FaceTime their family to let them know like what's going on. Um, there was times where the patients like they was on at the time was on some kind of respiratory device to help them breathe. But when it wasn't doing too good, they had to get intubated. And then I've seen it where doctors also was calling the family members, letting them know that, you know, your family member here, they're not doing too well. They're going to have to get intubated, letting them know what's going on. Yeah. There was times where, the morgues were getting too full. And then there was actually the morgues, the freezers that was outside by the house, by, behind the hospital. They had trucks. Trucks. C- correct. Outside. Yeah, that's how bad it was. People that's were, how horrible Unfortunately, it was. they were dropping like flies at one point. Yeah. That you were watching. So this wasn't a mystery. This wasn't something perpetrated by the media. No, no This not was at something all. that like, you saw with your own eyes. With firsthand. my own eyes. It's just un- seeing it like morgues of Full. And how did that make you feel? Like, my God, man. And thank you, it's first a, and foremost, all the essential workers out there, like, such as yourself, that were in there trying to make things happen as best you could. But uh, how did that make you, you feel, so Shantae? Much. It was scary. It was scary, but at the same time, I knew this is what I meant to do. I'm here to help people that's in situations that they're uncomfortable being in and then trying to make things better. And sometimes, unfortunately, that don't always happen that way. But... It's just my job to try to make the situation as good as possible. And then having the, the team with you, your coworkers, everybody being there with you by your side, just getting patients to where they got to go or just helping them. And How was the level of teamwork during that time? Oh, the teamwork is strong because you need the respiratory therapists, the nurses, the doctors, the patient transporters, housekeeping, like everybody that some people just – and the healthcare period, people just, nurses and doctors, nurses and doctors. And yes, of course, they're very important, but it's more to the team. It's more, it's a team effort from the administration to everything. Like, it's a team effort. So it's, it's tough, but teamwork is everything. Now, you were actually transporting patients around that had COVID as well? Yeah, because some patients that was were actually good, they wouldn't have to, didn't have to stay in the hospital anymore. They just had to go home to quarantine. Yeah. So they also had got transported um, to be discharged at the hospital. There was some that were like had to get CAT scans and other procedures done. 
So they had to get transported. Um, some that had to get x-rayed on those cases, then it would be like a portable x-ray. Something had to be done. But, yeah, there were patients that had COVID that also had to be transported. But if you're trying to do it as less as possible, but if it's something like really severe that has to be done, yeah. then we have to do it. Wow. And I would imagine that during this whole thing you were wearing a mask correct oh of course it's like and why do people wear masks at hospitals i'm just curious i'm a little dumb that, Could you explain <laughs> to me why people wear masks at hospitals even before covid they would wear masks i would imagine right yeah because people like they, they're coming in and they're sick you don't know mm. what they have yeah you don't know what's going on a lot of things it's just airborne it's viruses everything that could just that you could breathe in so people been before covid people when trying to be extra safe and cover their face up because you're in the patient's their personal space as you're taking care of them so you don't want to exactly inhale in what they probably have that you want to try to to cure or get rid of or anything so protection is is everything even before covid okay so it it, it is a scientifically smart choice to wear masks if you're working, you know, in a hospital and you're around people that may be sick. Definitely. Okay. Even this before is not, COVID. This is not some conspiracy to try to take away our independence. This is no. <laughs> this is a, a, a mandatory thing if you want to try to stop a disease from entering your body as best you can. It's not 100%. Exactly. exactly. But it is, it is a, 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 a line of defense against any respiratory illness or any germs that may enter through your mucous membranes of your of your uh, body. hundred percent. Okay. No, cause I was bugging. I thought that, yeah. you know, I thought maybe masks <laughs> weren't important and you know, you could just no, continue. No, so how do you feel not. about people not wearing masks and things across America and just partying mm-hmm. like it's willy nilly, you know, nobody <laughs> giving a, a, a crap about what's happening. They're like, whatever, if you get sick, like, you know, and you die, that's on you. You know what I'm saying? Your yeah. body was weak. How do you feel about people that think like that? Like, well, those are the ones I believe that probably been, fortunate enough to not get sick from it or don't know anyone who suffered from it yeah so they just have this whole idea like oh it's not real or you're not going to get sick or this and that and it's just ridiculous and i just really wish they would change their mindset because it's real like i've known people and co-workers that were sick from it and some was able to recover from it yeah and then it was co-workers that i've known that passed away from it and wow that's deep yeah wow. so it's like this stuff is real like this is a pandemic and yeah. like for those who don't understand what that's going on like it's an outbreak it's a virus that's spread throughout the country it affects everyone like the entire country around the world is worldwide it don't just affect uh, a certain community or anything like COVID do not discriminate. Like yeah. people may discriminate, but COVID yeah. don't. Like so COVID. I mean, and what I mean, and I, man. And you saw this like firsthand in the firsthand, hospital. And did you and see the age. accumulation of people? Like oh, every yes. day would pass, and then more and more people would be in the hospitals. That was a reality. That wasn't a farce. No, not all. It's a reality, and it's all ages. What I believe that made it a bit more scary is yeah. that how young these people were. Like sometimes, ideally, you might think it's just people that's older that already have a little underlying health issues so it might affect them more which it does but it also have people that's around our age or even younger that's fighting for their lives with this or just suffering from it and it's like this is real wow this is, this and you would young. see them man go in there and then wow they wouldn't come back out that's crazy yeah some wouldn't come back out some and did and they were young yeah. it wasn't it wasn't discriminating against the 20 year olds not and, at all and, and above you know not at all though they wow. were affected as well it was young girl even in their teens yeah so it's it's serious oh man yeah oh man so you know you also did work as an EMT, correct? Correct. Do you feel like that helped you during this, during the pandemic when it initially started? Like, because you were, you know, you're used to reacting to emergencies, I exactly. would imagine. So was um, it something that came natural to you while, you know, this was happening it in the beginning? definitely did because I've already been in the medical field. I've already seen a lot, been exposed to seeing a, a lot of things that will probably be seen in movies or something. Yeah. So. I was always some already somewhat like prepared for certain things yeah. and you know some things was already looked familiar and but even with that every day is always still something different something still to learn from so but being having an EMT background 
definitely helped. Yeah, it did, definitely. Did the lack of PPE uh, hurt you at all, or was that was that an issue at where you were working well, in the facility you were at? Fortunately, that didn't affect me. Like we always did have the PPE yeah. available, but I know a lot of places like that they, they didn't, and that definitely can affect you big time because it's like at the same time you, of course, you want to help and do what you have to do. But you don't want to get sick and now bring this home and now who's going to take care of you and your loved ones. And then that will be even less people working at the hospital. But the workload is still adding up. Yeah. So it's like, what was that like, that workload adding up? Because people really don't oh. comprehend because there's a lot of, you know, a lot of institutions right now that, you know, in a lot of states that didn't listen to the warning side that, you know, they saw what happened in New York and still disregarded it. Right. And now they're suffering lack of PPE. Now they're calling for reinforcements from other states mm-hmm. and they're overwhelmed in the hospitals. Like, what was that like, yeah. that level of desperation? Yeah, no, it's it's really crazy and it's really scary. And then at the same time, it's disappointing that, no one is listening until the last minute Yeah. to the last minute. And then now you have to be even extra stressed out. And then once the, and there were a lot of um, healthcare workers that had got sick from this. So now that's less people working, but the hospitals, the workload is like 10 times fold. So it's like, there's the stress level. Like it's ridiculous when people refuse to listen. And it gets really tough. And when you don't have enough PPE and then you're trying to stretch things out, that's tough. And at the same time, that's not safe at all. So we're putting ourselves even more in danger that we already are being frontline and not having the proper equipment. (laughs) You might as well stay home. And by the way, uh, you know, discussing that, everyone that comes into the Angel of Words podcast studio gets their, you know, their uh, their temperatures checked. Everybody checked out oh, before everybody course. stepped in. You know how we do. You know what I mean? We're doing a maskless uh, podcast, but we are making sure that oh, we're yes. taking the necessary and, precautions and, I got and practicing what we're preaching here on the Angel of Words podcast. Definitely. But man, yo, that's nuts, man. That must be so frustrating. And then Very you have, frustrating. Because, you know, you get varying... Um, um, you know, I, I obviously I'm into media. I read a lot of media. You know, I, I pay I try to pay as much attention as I can overall to all the things that are happening right now in society. And you get a lot of reports saying that everybody's fine, that they have mm. enough PPE, yada, yada, yada. The governor was taking hits. The president was taking hits. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, and I'm like, I really don't want to listen to anyone that wasn't involved oh. in there personally. Like, Beautiful. I want to know what's really what going, going on, on, you know, but, from yeah. the horse's mouth. So I'm happy to hear that your PPE levels at the institution that you were working at yeah. were at the proper levels where you guys could actually, you know, help as many people as you can as fast as you can. Definitely. You know? Wow. So now, you know, you go from that situation, right? And then you decided to take a different course. Yeah. How did that come about? Because I didn't know people were still studying and, yeah. and doing things. I'm like, I thought everything <laughs> shut down. You know, once I finish college, I'm like, yo, thank God that's done. I still have nightmares that I didn't finish. I never want to go back to school. But you said, nah, I'm gonna take this to another level, and then you decided to become a respiratory therapist. What was that like? Doing both things at yeah, once throughout yeah. the pandemic. Oh man, it's. It's hard going to school and working alone is yeah. is tough. It's it's hard, yeah. and then now the pandemic happened, so it's like, what in the world is this? Like, yeah. what's going on? But so you were already case, going to school for what you was yeah, doing when the pandemic happened, right? All but right. in my case, luckily, this was towards the end of my schooling. Yeah. So towards the end of my schooling, in my case, pretty much everything was already done. It was almost yeah. like a review at that point. And um, we just had to do finish up our, our clinicals and stuff. And then at a point, that had to be shut down because there was a pandemic. They was like, okay, yeah. we're going to have time for students and all yeah, this stuff. No. Like, <laughs> I mean, but those teachers have, you know, those teachers but, had to go into the field and actually work. Yeah. That's the issue. People were running out of people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was getting real in yeah. the field. So for our school, that's when they started the whole Zoom yeah. thing and everything. We didn't have a graduation because of the pandemic. No, I'm but, sorry to hear that, man. You, I had a girl on the show that, yeah. that that also didn't have a graduation. I felt bad for yeah. her because she was the first one to graduate, man. And oh, I, I apologize okay. to you as well. Hopefully one day they'll make it's, it up to you guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but at that point, that was like the least of our worries with the yeah. graduation. The main thing was just, 
if you finish and then even after graduating we still had to take our test to get for our license from yeah. the board so that was like something else to study for and yeah. all this other stuff and that's so. intricate you got to get a multitude of licenses when you're studying to be a respiratory <laughs> therapist it's like seven or eight something crazy like that yeah, right no, yeah, a bunch two. of certifications <laughs> no yeah just two that we have to a take two? Okay. yeah but those two are tough like yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it, you know? it got done i did it so yeah. after finishing school then we had to take the license but i did that pretty much like right after i didn't want to waste no time yeah. at all so I went what, and I did that. Was there any point where everybody's like, yo, I know that you haven't finished yet, but come do some respiratory no. therapy over here. Like, we need you. No, there Because you guys work a, with anesthesiologists. You work with a lot of different types of no, uh, of professionals sure. in that in the medical world. Yeah, you know? yeah, we, we do. And then, no, I did hear there was a point that they was going to take on students that was about to graduate yeah. to come help during the pandemic and do everything. But um, I, I, it didn't work for me. I haven't done that. I didn't even yeah. like, look too much into it, but... I guess some people did. I, I think it was like a little temporary thing that could happen, but I just was like, oh, let me just get my license, just do everything, and now I'm here. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, could you explain to the layman, like, what is a respiratory therapist, and, you know, what do they mm -hmm. do, you know? Okay. Why are they so important right. to the medical cause? Well, well, they're important, and especially now. Yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, yeah. especially. I'm being sarcastic. I'm on my sarcastic float no, today yeah. on the Angel of Words podcast. <laughs> apparently, you know what I mean? These things yeah. don't exist, and yeah. we don't need you people. And, yeah, you know, no. we could just live all merrily and without any <laughs> rules and regulations and do whatever you want to do in life. You know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, no, but yes, respiratory therapy. Yes, what is it that yeah. you folks do, man? Please. No, so there's us. a lot of patients that need some assistance with breathing, yeah. and there's um where they have non-invasive care and invasive care, mm -hmm. and basically being with the um non-invasive care is usually being on um have an oxygen device, but you have like even like a high flow nasal cannula, basically mm -hmm. where the oxygen level is a bit more aggressive for the oxygen levels to go down to your lungs to your every life for gas exchange to happen. And then there's um, also, you know, where they have a mask over your, your nose and your mouth to help with breathing, getting the air in and out and everything. And then when things get really serious and it's severe, is now when you go into the ventilator. And then especially now in this case, that's been going on a lot with these COVID patients. So now with the respiratory therapist, that's where we mainly come into play when we have to set up the ventilator. Um, once the patient is on the ventilator now, now we ha there's, you know, there's a set of numbers that we look to see what the patient is giving back, which give us information as far as how their pulmonary mechanics is doing. Yeah. If things is getting better or, better or worse, you know, if their lungs becoming more compliant or if it's getting stiff. And with that information itself, it let us know Okay, we had to make some adjustments here. Then we, you know, consult with the doctor, let them know what's going on. Um, and that's like biomechanical engineering. You got to know a lot of stuff, no, man. Yeah, this is no, no joke. No, it's no joke. <laughs> Yo, it's, it's no joke. Yo. There's a lot of numbers and volumes like that we have. Physiology, physiology. Yeah, and that's a lot the of stuff courses that on. we have to take. Holy moly, then, guacamole, man! This is crazy. <laughs> and those field. are the courses that we have wow, to take in school. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah, also having to draw their blood, their yeah. arterial blood, to know. Their, their acid based balance levels and have to work from there to see what's going on and also taking care of the oral care because now the mechanism of them be, being able to like to swallow and clear their throats they can't do that they have yeah. a tube down their throat yeah. so it's now it's our job to try to maintain that to try to reduce infections going on because they already have a lot going on and yeah. then now you're being on a machine and you're talking about COVID patients specifically right now yeah COVID patients okay. and all patients as well but yeah especially yeah. COVID patients okay. too okay and then um yeah it had to do with a, a lot of you know suctioning because you don't want all that secretions to build up and all this bacteria and everything so yeah, it's it's could be a lot. And that's crazy. <laughs> right now we're talking to, uh, you know, respiratory ther therapist Shantae Saru putting us on to what it's like to really help a COVID patient. Now, you know, they, they mentioned that sometimes intubations is not a good thing. That's a last resort type of mechanism, is it? Or, Definitely. or am I wrong with that? No, you're correct. So what you know what what try, what kind of steps do you try to take before that as a respiratory therapist to help out these COVID nineteen patients? Well, before that, that's when because being intubated that's invasive. Yeah. So that's 
what we would try to avoid, you know, unless it's it's necessary. But before that, that's when you be on the the non invasive things I was speaking about, being mm-hmm. on um like a high flow nasal cannula where you just have the nasal prongs in your nose and the, the gas flow just a bit more aggressive mm-hmm. to get down to, you know, dis- distribute all the oxygen throughout your lungs, trying to get it there because with COVID, the thing is your your lungs is being filled with fluid. And then that's what's it, happening during COVID because yeah. I'm not too, you know, I'm not too yeah. familiar with the actual science behind so, yeah. the way. Cause, you know, and a lot of people didn't know back in the days. Now, you know, because I did a trilogy with people back back like when it first started in march but now you know we know we got a little bit more information yeah. so continue i'm sorry but yeah. Continue. yeah yeah so your, your lungs is pretty much is inflamed okay. and then once you have all this fluid and everything in your lungs now it's like how is gas supposed to distribute and what does inflaming mean actually like what does that mean yeah. Sam? what's happening in your body like yeah, scientifically like your lungs is pretty much it has an infection okay it's not able to deal with the, the gas exchange that's supposed to go through your body, your oxygen level, your oxygenation levels, is desaturating, it's low because of the fluid buildup. So now what we have in our lungs, like it's our lungs, but it's the alveoli, which is where the gas exchange goes on, where we take in the oxygen and then we exhale the CO2. Now, if your lungs is not working properly, now that's a problem. And then that's where we come into play and then... Before you get intubated, of course, we want to try to do things non-invasively. And hopefully, depending if your body responds pretty okay with that, then that's what you what you stay on. So, um, but then if your body just is just can't deal with it and you need more assistance, then that's when it goes into invasive, which you'd be intubated in. Nobody wants to be intubated. Now, before intubation, are there are there any medications that are being administered during this time to try to get them off of not to not to try to get them off, but to try not to let them get on the ventilator as a last resort situation? Um, are you guys administering so any kind of medication? Well, as far as respiratory therapists, the medicine that we would normally would give, yeah. Will be sometimes we could be like for asthma patients or something where they get like a butyrol okay. or things to open up the bronchioles to help them breathe. Now, um, as of yet, I don't know if there's other medications that the nurses will have to give um, COVID patients to help like better their their lungs because I know that um, before someone asked me about like antibiotics, but antibiotics is only for bacteria. Yeah. So that definitely wouldn't help because this is a virus here going on. So they need something a bit more aggressive. So as far as other medications, I'm not 100% sure as the other medicines that they give. Okay. But as far as on our end, the respiratory therapist, um, from what I know as of yet, no, we haven't gave okay. that, that. Yeah. Damn, so then you got to put them on the, you know, on the ventilators and the process of that is called intubation or incubation? (laughs) Intubation. I'm a little dumb sometimes. No, you're not dumb. You know, I like to have the real facts here, you know? (laughs) Intubation. I bet that. Wow, man. Wow. And, you know, when people come off that, is there, is there like, uh, consequences to putting them on, on those, on Um, those ventilators? Like internally, because you know, I would imagine you said it's invasive, so no, it could be no, a little yep. dramatic to their bodies. Of, of course, like okay. when people get intubated, we always will want them not to be on there too long, especially if you don't really have. Like if you have to, then of course you have to. But of course, the longer you are you're intubated, the higher the chances of other you know problems going on like within your body. Because then at the same time, as you now have this tube breathing for you, and you're not having your own mechanism of completely breathing on your own that can also affect your diaphragm because that's how we normally breathe we use that that contracts and that helps us breathe in and out but if you're on the ventilator that could like stiffen up a little bit like throughout time and at the same time as you having this tube in your mouth you don't want you know fluid sometimes could build up down around the tube and then that could sometimes also lead to infection that's why there's um a, a Within the tube, there's like a cuff where we put the pressure in it so the tube also stays stabilized and so secretions won't, you know, aspirate down to the lungs. But at the same time, also as a respiratory therapist, we also have to keep track of that pressure of the tube because if it's too much, then now that's, you don't want to stop the blood flow within your trachea, which that's the medical term for, but as everybody might know, that's called the windpipe, that you don't want to put too much pressure on there and start the blood flow and then cause necrosis. And then now, like, 
that's another problem within. within oh your man, mind. so you got to monitor this. You got to no, be on yeah, it. Like yeah. this is trenches this is for real. Right. Yeah, you don't <laughs> like, just go like, okay, you put him in. All right, we'll, we'll be back. Yeah, we'll see how you're doing yeah, later. Yeah. Now you have to yeah. continue to track, and then also oh, when they have man. the tube in their mouth, once it's stabilized, we also have to rotate the tube, you know, throughout a shift from left to right to center because if you just leave it in one place and then that cause pressure also yeah. so then you don't want your skin to break down so we have to take care of that and continue to move the tube and and you guys yeah. are all over the place in the in, in the hospital right you're in the you're in the icu i would imagine you're in the uh, patient rooms you yeah, know wow yeah yeah so that's crazy what's tougher being in the icu or doing the doing the rounds in the, <sighs> in the patient areas Oh yeah, that's hard. Course. That's tougher. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'd rather be in the ICU unit. <laughs> yeah, an ICU, and then at the same time, the patients yeah. could be on you know other devices that you know the nurses put them on, so the room could actually get cluttered. Like yeah. you got the patient there, you have the ventilator, you have this device, that device, so you're just trying to squeeze in, do what you have to do, monitor the patient, adjust, fix anything with the patient that has to be done. They could also even be on dialysis at the same time yeah. while they're on it so that's another machine there that's in the way and then dealing with the covid patients so you're in here so you want to do what you got to do but not expose yourself for too long and yeah wow what well, could you describe the level of patience you got to have to be in this field for the anyone that wants to be what, that wants to do what you do <laughs> yeah because there may be somebody listening like, man this sounds interesting this sounds yeah. cool like, <laughs> but also let them know if, if yeah. there's a certain level of patience that yeah, you need to have to deal with this definitely that sounds like crazy <laughs> sounds like you're doing martial arts and twisting and turning in there i'm like i don't know i don't think that's a little yeah. bit too much for the kid over here it, you know? it, <laughs> yeah it could be and these are some of the things that you yeah. don't necessarily learn like ah. in school Cool. These are the things now. Once you're in the field, do they teach you, you yoga it? in these classes? Uh, in the therapy, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> no, but yeah, no, continue. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, yeah. yeah, it gets yeah. It, you definitely have to lot, have a lot of patience, but most importantly, like if you really want to do this, determination. That's number one. Like you have yeah. to be determined and really focused because you can easily get distracted, and if things don't go right the first time you feel like you want to give up and you definitely should not give up because this yeah. wasn't an easy journey for me like because there's plenty of times i want to be like i oh, forget this this ain't it like yeah but at the same time i'm thinking about my future and it's like do i want to stay where i'm at and then just sit there and complain and be miserable the rest of my life yeah. or whatever or i just gotta roll with the punches and just do what i have to do if i fail Touch yourself off, try again, and keep yeah. going. And you can't be scared, man. You can't. And you also learn from those little mistakes or little trials and errors. Like that's where the lessons are brought in. That's not necessarily not necessarily taught in school. Like it's within the experience itself on the field. Yeah. In the field. So yeah. And did you grow up here in New York? Yeah. Born uh, and raised. Oh man. <laughs> what, what part of the, what part of the city? Harlem world. Oh my God! Did you ever think you'd be you'd be fighting off coronavirus growing up in Harlem, man? Never. Never. <laughs> you see this in your future, God? That must be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> wow, man! You know, shout out to Harlem, East Harlem, all all over the you know yeah, Harlem world, all over all across right. the board. But man, that must be nuts, man! Like you know, you you're, you're a little girl in Harlem, and now you're freaking helping people try to survive this pandemic, man. Did you yeah. ever? See this in your future, huh? This the wasn't we even do. visualized <laughs> at all. Now, could you also describe the level of uh, love for humanity that you have to have? Oh, because yeah. you have to like humans on some kind of some innate kind of level <laughs> in order to do this. Because you know what I'm saying? Not a lot of people, you know, can really deal with this. Yeah. You have to have a, some kind no, of compassion. You really do. Like this is really not for everyone. Like yeah. it, it's not. Everything is really not for everybody. And then for you just to be in a medical field alone, like you have to have some kind of compassion like mm -hmm. for humans like because yeah. these are situations that can happen to anybody even patient that's covid or any other trauma things any medical situations anything can happen especially with trauma like you mm -hmm. could be here right now and in a second you go out, anything can happen so that's what really made me be like being in this field and really once i'm doing what i'm doing to really put my heart into it because this stuff like this is real this is real life like yeah. things happen and if you in this situation you will want the best care if your mother your loved ones so that's what really made me be like 
no, I, I have to put my all into this because this could happen to anybody. If it's not me, it could happen to my loved one. And I would want someone to to love their job and do what they're doing and take care of this person. Yeah, because that's a worry that I have. You know, when you go to the hospitals, everybody's always worried, oh, they're not going to take care of me as as much as you can take care of me. But, you know, I've had a bunch of people in, in, in this part of STEM, you know, in the medical side of STEM, and I realized that every single one of you are really dedicated to what you do Dude. and you take it as seriously Seriously. as you can on a daily basis, which is hard for a lot of people to accomplish, man. It's hard to be, you know, serious from that shift it was from when that shift begins to when that shift ends oh, yes. because you're dealing with people's lives. This ain't no <laughs> joke. If something goes wrong, you, you know, malpractice suits can get thin. You can get fired yeah, for things exactly. like that. Have you ever know, wish, exactly. witnessed that? Or, no, so no, far, okay, luckily, yeah. I haven't. I don't know if I guess because I'm still very, very new yeah. into the respiratory world. Yeah. But so far, no, I have not witnessed that. But I know that stuff pretty sure it does happen yeah. and it can happen. Hopefully that never happened to me, but um, I don't think but, it will. You know, oh, yeah, we're gonna yeah. send the blessing your way here Thanks from the podcast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but Appreciate man, it. yo, there's any you? So you've never heard of any drama like that, man? Somebody, somebody no, messing up so bad. Practice, uh, no, that well, no. that's good, man. No, that's yeah. good. So you don't so want to hear those I'm stories. You know? <laughs> no, I still want to hear it. If it's out there, yeah. I would want to, so I can learn from it and and not you know fall into those footsteps. <laughs> yeah, no, man, that's crazy. Wow, so. You know, you you decide to make this leap into yeah. respiratory therapy, yeah. you know. Now, how long was this course? Was it something that was like you, you couldn't wait to finish? Was it something re- relatively brief? <laughs> respiratory school, first of all, it was very tough. But yeah. the program itself is two years. Okay. It can take you longer depending on life <laughs> yeah yeah no i hear you you know it's so funny because you uh, so most people say your level of intelligence but you're this like is, life no no because <laughs> yeah. in new york it ain't easy man you're it's always not. juggling a million things exactly. you know what i'm saying it's, exactly. a, it's a different world out here people don't understand exactly and that's why i was saying before that you had to be determined and focused and when things at the moment don't necessarily go right yeah that means that everything's wrong yeah you have to just pick it up and keep going and figure out what you possibly did wrong, find new ways to, to study and uh, whatever the case is yeah. that you feel that's not going right. Make adjustments and make it happen. There's always a low point when you're doing, when you're trying to do something new. Could you describe one low point where you're like, man, I don't want, I don't want no more of this. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. As of recently, a couple of weeks ago. Really? <laughs> <was> <laughs> What happened? Please tell yeah, us, man. Just, <laughs> you know, we oh, like to hear that, these overcoming stories. No, you know? yeah, definitely. Stories of resiliency. Of, because at the same time, this I'm completely new in this field. Yeah. You know, I just finished school. And then not only am I new in this, I'm also, I'm not in the same hospital anymore. I started in a new hospital. So I'm in a new building, new people, like everything is just completely new. And at the same time, that's, that's what I wanted because I wanted to get out of my comfort zone and just start a completely fresh, a new career and everything. But then what that came was just a lot of jittery nerves at the same time. Because yeah. besides the job alone, just learning your way around the building, it's like, wait, what elevator do I take again? Where the hell yeah. am I? What is this? And then Yeah, because these hospitals be like mazes, man. They're like labyrinths. Exactly. <laughs> it's pretty yeah, crazy. It's like, what? I'm in this <laughs> mansion and this and that. And just could be a simple thing of just going into one of the supply rooms and you're like, fuck what's the code for this place like what's the code <laughs> <laughs> somebody help me please yeah, god send yeah. me a sign you know <laughs> so it's like oh my god and you know you gotta ask questions and you know people's not always luckily people have been nice to me but yeah i'm sure i'm gonna come across a point where people's not always nice and then you just gotta dust that off and just go so yeah just there was a point just being completely new and then making sure I do things right, make sure I have learned things properly. And then, yeah, I, just that whole feeling. I'm like, oh, gosh, when will this pass? But it's passing. Yeah, the anxiety levels have starting to decrease. No, yeah. no, yeah. How was really that has. first week, man? That, that, <laughs> actually, the anxiety levels actually started weeks later. Okay. It actually, weeks, okay. because especially like within my first week, that's the first week I didn't necessarily start right away. We had to get things together like you know logging information and mm-hmm. all that little tedious all that technical things. stuff yeah. yeah so and then you know i was when you're training you know you're, you're shadowing someone so you're learning but 
you still have like somewhat almost still feel like a student a little bit, even though now that's not the case, but it's like you have somebody to fall back on, like somebody's right there. So it's like, but then now once you're on your own, then that's when the nerves come in like, oh, this is real life. Yeah. Like I'm a respiratory therapist. This oh, is me. Like, yeah. even though hope is always there. You <laughs> this is my nice. new identity, you yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a revelating experience. You're like, whoa, sink yeah. or swim time. Based a hundred percent. Sink or swim. Yes. Wow. Yeah, yes. And, but you also deal with like cardiac arrest and things of that nature. It's a very elaborate profession, you know, because yeah, you deal with the lot. cardiovascular system as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, asthma, bronchitis, a, a whole bunch of plethora of different different things yeah, man so i'm sure there's never a dull turn. moment never that's why like every day is a it's a new day you don't know what to expect it could be a nice slow day it could get busy and crazy it's, yeah yeah the respiratory man it's now yeah. are there any particular breathing exercises that you can show our uh, viewers and listeners right now <laughs> it's, it's like it's for regular human beings <laughs> well <laughs> oh boy one trick of the trade Just come on let us know that, well, yeah. I have a problem breathing too, man. You do. Well, if, if I could, you know. Well, for one, if you have a problem breathing and you're smoking, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of the ways to help, yeah. is to stop smoking. Okay, but if you can't, you know, let's say for say someone can't quit smoking, you they know, can. No, first of all, you can. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? You know. Well, if you're smoking and you refuse to stop yeah. smoking, then that's different. Yeah. Let, let them so know, that's you know? one. <laughs> and before I show you this breathing technique, yeah, one of the things that one of the main respiratory diseases out there is copd which is um construct um chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and i usually happen from people that smoke a lot and basically what that happened is it break down your lungs it breaks down the elasticity in your lungs which supposed to help passively help you with exhalation now throughout years and years of smoking now the smoke damaged that and that can like be reversed you can learn to it can be reversed. You can reverse no, that. No, you can't. Oh, once that happens, it's over. <laughs> it's Well, there yeah. you go, smokers. You're going right. to lose elasticity in your <laughs> exactly. lungs. You better quit now. Yeah, so like there's ways now. Something to think about. Of, you know, ways to, to deal with it and yeah. maintain it so things won't get worse. Yeah. And they also have a different way of breathing to help now their new life, which is called purse breathing, where they pretty much forcing out the air out their lungs, which is not supposed to happen. It's supposed yeah. to just happen naturally, but... Yeah, so if you're smoking, yeah. Could you explain that one more time? So your, your elasticity breaks down, so it's hard for you to breathe out. So yeah. You, so there's CO2 so that's staying in your lungs, exa- essentially. 100%. They there also call CO2 God, retainers. I, I, things are just coming to my head Listen, from biology class. Shit, I'm like, wow. Now it's starting to make sense. <laughs> yeah, so they also are called yeah. CO2 retainers because okay. they can't really exhale as much CO2, So and they take longer to exhale because they have... The elasticity in their lungs is yeah. is ruined. So, yeah. And then now they body, since they have so much CO2, they body now done compensated for it and is that's their new way of living, way of breathing. And some is, you know, way more severe than others. But now their life done, it just, it just subsided. It just got smaller. Like the normal things of just walk from here to the bathroom might be a struggle for them, might be a workout compared to, what people might take for granted and just get up and go do what you got to do and, and do you it. see that in people in their mid 40s 50s or some yeah, people in their usually, 60s and 70s no definitely it could be in your 60s and 70s okay. but yeah in your 50s not probably not in your 40s but you could be on your way but, to uh, yeah, it but i'm saying you could be on your on a nice path to having oh, horrible you, you, lung uh, capacity. Uh, yeah if you don't stop yeah because that's that's where it starts and you continue when you your 50s 60s 70s your your life is is un- it's gonna like shrink because your yeah. whole world really could just the quality of life is gonna be less yeah you're like your whole wow. life really could just be in this room God. because it's just hard for you to just get up and go and do this or do that like then, so. you have to, then you're gonna use my tax dollars to get those cool wheelchairs <laughs> to move around <laughs> exactly damn so stop smoking people yeah <laughs> cigarettes <laughs> are no brenner <laughs> <laughs> So you're going to teach us that technique, though? So, yeah, it's just (laughs) basically... For those that have healthy lungs, Exactly. Just deep breath. Just take deep breaths in and breathe all the way out. You don't have to count and exhale a certain amount of time. There's no technique like that. I mean, you can. It also depends on how, you know, comfortable you are. But definitely taking a big, deep breath. Keep Mm. those alveoli open. 
pop them bad boys open yeah. and breathe right out nice so and how long is a deep breath of those supposed to take ideally you just could be quick because some you know i guess if you're a smoker you take a deep breath and then oh, you see, stop now it's automatically no, it's see, like you now don't even have a choice now yeah. with smokers yeah. <laughs> 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 now with smokers the problem with them is will be with exhaling so mm-hmm. that's the part so inhaling will be might be a little quick mm-hmm. the exhaling part that's going to take longer yeah because the elasticity you don't oh, want to mess man. that up that can't be fixed all right <laughs> folks so just you know make sure you take deep breaths throughout the day so it's good and does yeah. that does, do they teach you does that even help you like maintain some uh, sort of uh equilibrium too like no which, no yeah it does yeah. especially after like surgery if you yeah. have some surgery and then it's good for them to take those deep breaths because you want to yeah. keep those you don't want it to collapse so yeah. especially at the situ- um situation where you had like a surgery the deep breathing that definitely will help and then for patients that you know have the smoking problem exhaling that's where their issue is what about sleep apnea like if people, someone snores what's up with that how do you help them like yeah. you know what's the best course of action to take if you're just suffering from snoring a lot um for those patients they usually have a machine called CPAP okay. which is continuous positive pressure that's being like pushed down into your lungs and then also with sleeping is their tongue is what the obstruction is is blocking the airway also oh, that's what it is when you snore your tongue is in the way yeah because it could be <laughs> your wow. tongue is, it's an obstruction so uh, it could be that amazing you know and then yeah though so they also have um a machine called CPAP, which they use when they're sleeping to help them with sleep apnea because some people too and they sleep and then it may stop breathing for about like 10 seconds and that may happen periodically and yeah that machine what they use then that you'll be breathing <laughs> really so okay i'll keep so what's your tongue this whole time man that's crazy yeah. so are there things that happen that your tongue does that though do you know like, is there a reason it's, why your tongue cool. starts obstructing your, 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 um, your, your sometimes passageways? Sometimes it could be if you're a beast. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, okay. So, <laughs> that's like could be one of the right. big main issues. Really? There. You, so, obesity slipping. affects that? Oh, uh, first of all, obesity affects a lot of things. Damn. Like, like, losing weight, taking care of your health can prevent a lot of things. But in this case, yeah, that's definitely one of the, the main things. Okay. So, yeah. Take wow, care of yourselves, man. people. What about drinking? Does that affect that? <laughs> your, your tongue movements? I'm just curious, man. I, I want to help the people. We're here no, to help the no, people. That, Give that some might info, affect man. your you know? liver throughout time. Because, you know, you don't hear these things. There's no PSAs about this. Like, yeah, you know, no, the elasticity of your lungs if you no. smoke. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. people don't talk about it. They say, hey, you, you may get cancer when you're 70. Some people are like, fuck it. I'll smoke till I'm 70. If I die, <laughs> fuck it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, like, they don't know, like, yo, like, the, the actual science, science that more and the deterioration. And that, that happens That you can time. stop right now if you just decide to give it up, you know, whether mm-hmm. it, whatever it is that it, it yeah. is a vice that could affect you down the line. Yeah, like... So, damn, so drinking does it? hurt you as well. I mean, it will affect your liver throughout time. I mean, we long, know about but that, but it won't affect your... Will, will it affect your respiratory issues? Would it cause you um, to start snoring or anything that matter? No, not necessarily. Oh, okay. No. Just wanted to make sure. So you make know sure. So We're trying to tap so all the bases, <laughs> man. Leave, leave no stone unturned over here on the Angel of the Words podcast. <laughs> now... You also deal with um, people that have cardi that have suffered a cardiac arrest. Mm-hmm. You know how does you know how does breathing help the the heart functions? Oh, it's like the heart and the lungs are like cousins. Yeah. <laughs> like if one is affected, it's... kissing cousins or regular. Yeah. Cousins? <laughs> <laughs> The humping cousins. Oh, yeah. Not my- <laughs> I've been watching too much Game of Thrones. I'm sorry, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> but um, yes, the heart, if it's not um pumping properly because yeah. of like one of the ventricles or the valves is not working properly or something, now your heart it might not pump blood in the correct direction, and that will lead to congested heart failure, which is now like there's a backflow of the blood, and then now that will put more pressure in your lungs. Like if your heart's supposed to be going one way to um, circulate within your lungs or something or throughout, you know, your, your body, the systemic circulation. And then if it backs up, then now that fluid itself builds up in your lungs. Mm. And, and then that's how everything starts Damn, within time. Great. So yeah, the heart and the, the lungs, they're, they're buddies. They coincide with one another. 
So now you also you also give people treatments though, right? I mean, like you you help develop treatment plans for people, respiratory respiratory yeah. therapists. Yeah, we like, do, yeah, we do. you know, sometimes that doesn't even go through the um through the doctors themselves, the pulmonary doctors or the cardiovascular mm-hmm. doctors. It may go through you. You guys actually go out there yeah. and give them a plan to try to. Be- no. better serve their lungs or their heart or what you know yeah both. like we we give them treatments but the orders still have to be done within with by the doctor okay like, so we don't like write the orders or anything like we will we will give it to them but as far as like prescriptions or just giving the treatment that's within the doctor so okay. when you give treatments first you always have to make sure that there's an order like with almost everything that we have to do like even as far as get, putting them on their whatever oxygen device that they have like there's always an order and by the doctor. So we always still have to check in with that before sometimes we do anything. Wow, man. Yeah, that's yeah, deep. That's so there's, there really so is a lot of teamwork involved. Yeah, in that's what I'm about to say. Everything is, is, is teamwork. It's wow. not necessarily like, oh, I'm going to just go off and do my own thing. No, nah, I'm just Yeah, just you can't teamwork. go off and just be wild and you got to make sure no. that you, you, know, you pay attention <laughs> to the protocol. It's exactly. very serious stuff. And then teamwork is definitely everything. That's why it's good to be nice with one another and with the nurses and yeah. Everybody, because at some point you might need a little help here because so we you all have take to have care. interpersonal skills, skills if you want to get in this field. You got to be able to deal with people not only on a patient level but also on a communicating could, with your coworkers. Definitely, definitely, because it's like this patient. They, you're not the only one taking care of this patient. Like it's a whole team effort, and then yeah, especially with your coworkers, because you might need a hand. You may need a, some help. Some things could just get just overloaded and nothing wrong with some help it could speed up the process you could also learn from one another and yeah communication is everything and, everything, and how's the communication where you're at now do you feel you feel you feel you the feel vibe good. you feel no, the yeah. energy like, over luckily, there luckily i'm so lucky like everything like so far and so how was the energy cool. at bellevue when you worked there everything was still good too oh that's good to hear yeah. man. that's good to hear because you know bellevue gets bellevue gets a lot of shit but people don't realize that's yeah. a trauma one what, center exactly like, if, you, <laughs> if, you, if you messed up you're gonna go to bellevue man exactly. the best doctors are there people exactly. don't understand it's that it's a level one trauma yeah, hospital it's a level so one trauma hospital right? a lot of yeah. people has been there and a lot of lives been saved yeah. and a lot of patients also been transferred to bellevue from another hospital because maybe that hospital don't specialize mm-hmm. in a certain thing and Bellevue does. So I know Bellevue yeah. always known as Yeah, the crazy. insane asylum. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, for and the, it's, yeah, like, it's like ridiculous. Yeah, though. so like, of course, you know, the thing that's more crazy will get most the most notice about yeah. everything. And it's like, no, Bellevue, they do it all there. Like, for people that have some mental issues down to women giving birth. <laughs> like, yeah. there's everything that's going on in there. So see a lot there in Bellevue. No, that's fantastic, man. Well, you know, (laughs) shout out to Bellevue Hospital. Keep doing your thing over there, man. Now we reached a point in the podcast where it's time to play Five Words with Angel. (laughs) All right, Shantae, on Five Words with Angel, I'm going to give you a word or phrase. You're going to give me the first word or phrase that comes to your head. Are you ready? I don't know, but okay. Let's do it. The first word is... lungs (laughs) lungs <laughs> breathing um <laughs> right. breathing i like it i like it next next word of five words with angel is senior citizens <laughs> um <laughs> medicine <laughs> 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 you ain't never lie, man. Those cupboards be filled, man. <laughs> for real, for real. Uh, the third word is the respiratory system. <laughs> um, breathing. <laughs> the nice. Lungs. There you go. Hey, you can repeat words on five words, but angels are right. There's no rules. The fourth word is COVID 19. <sighs> Shit is real. <laughs> <laughs> You heard it. You heard it all. You uh, conspiracy zanious. You wilding out. It's real in the field. You heard it here first. Well, you heard it here again. Um, And the fifth (laughs) word is essential worker. (sighs) Hard work. (laughs) <laughs> exposure <laughs> wow no, you, you ain't never lie well uh shantae before we end the podcast could you give a message out to the people out there listening viewing about what it means to you to be a respiratory uh, respiratory therapist if there's any way that they could reach out to you if they have questions you know and uh you know just a message for the people out there for harlem or anybody else you want to you know give a shout out to there's your moment 
Um, well, yeah, basically what I have to say to everyone is, you know, stay focused. If you have anything you want to, to go for, just do it. Any downfalls that happen, don't matter. Pick yourself up. Continue. Nothing's easy. People always want things to be easy. And if it's not easy, then they don't want to be bothered. No, yeah. put it in the effort. As much as you dream about it, you think about it, you talk about it, now be about it and go ahead and do it. Get do obsessed it, with what it, you're doing, right? Exactly. Nice. Exactly. Now, is there any websites that you can visit to, for respiratory therapy that you visited maybe in the past that people can go and get information? Um, oh, I took it back. What websites and stuff was I on? Like, how did you Google? get put onto this? Somebody mentioned it? Um, what made me become a respiratory therapist? Yeah, no, yeah. Like, what made you, like, think about well, it initially? The, um, well, at the time when I was working as a patient transporter, then I was, of course, always thinking about my future. I'm like, okay. oh, I want to do something more. I want to stimulate my brain. Like, yeah. I know there's more I want to do. I want to get more involved in critical care and everything. And then also, you know, I had patients that was on ventilators that had to be transported and stuff. So then I was just like, um, you know, the respiratory therapist had to be there. And I was just like, hmm. I could probably see myself doing that and then eventually just ask questions and everything and then I didn't want to be in school forever and I you know don't want to clean any patients or anything yeah. like that so I was like oh let me just look into this I could see myself doing this and it was just that simple and then <laughs> just, boom and boom here I am I'm years like, later you're on the Angel of Words podcast <laughs> talking <laughs> about the endeavors you know <laughs> that's right well Shantae Saru thank you for being part of the Angel of Words podcast <laughs> it was thank a pleasure you. listening to your plight here as a respiratory therapist and uh, everyone don't forget to tune into the Angel of Words podcast and we'll be uh, talking to you next week <laughs> thank you Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed my interview today with respiratory therapist Ms. Shantae Saru, giving us that information that we need about treating COVID-19 and what they've been going through in, in the major hospitals all across the country. Now you know where to find us if you want to watch the Angel of Words Entertainment Podcast on YouTube, Angel of Words ENT. You could find us also on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. If you feel like leaving a donation, you can cash us cash app us at a-o-w-e-n-t plus if you want to know what i'm up to on my social media and get that exclusive content go to at angel of words ent on all social media platforms thank you for tuning in everyone talk to you later